Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Professor Crimsy today and in today's tutorial I will teach you two different techniques to create beautiful seamless patterns in Clip Studio Paint. More specifically, with the first technique we're going to create this simple repeating pattern and with the second technique we're going to create this more complex black and white pattern. So let's begin with the first pattern technique. But first, what you'll need is to find a theme and design up to three elements that will be repeated in your pattern. I personally want to blame my Nico Shroom Monster Girl for making today's themes about mushrooms. Really, ever since I drew her and her little mushling, I've been just craving to draw more little mushroom people for videos. So here you go, these three little guys are ready to be put into our first pattern. But first, let's export them as high resolution PNG images like this. Perfect. So once the art is done, what you need to do is create a new square canvas. I personally work with a pretty big 4000 pixel square canvas at 300 dpi, but you can easily work with a 2000 pixel canvas. The most important thing here is to always keep your canvas as a square and to always keep your resolution at 300 dpi. So make sure those are your settings. All right. Now that you have your new canvas, press G twice on your keyboard to get the bucket tool. Select a plain color that will serve as your background and click on your canvas to fill it with your chosen color. Once this is done, go back to the menu, edit, change canvas size, and increase your canvas size by 2000 square pixels. Now what you should see is that we added a white border to our colored square. This will be very important when repeating our first pattern, so make sure you leave enough white space as a buffer. Otherwise, you won't be able to repeat your designs properly. Next up, what we need to do is import our three Mushling characters into our new canvas. To do this, simply drag and drop your PNG images from your folder right into your layers like this. Now that we are all set, it is time to experiment with the placement of the characters within the canvas. Duplicate your character's layers and hide the originals. Let's start moving the designs around to create the actual pattern. I'll first move this little shroom up here. Make sure you leave part of the design inside the colored square and part of the design outside the square and avoid placing your design over more than one edge of the square like this. Repeat the same process for the two other elements of your design and make sure to leave some space between them. Try to avoid making a straight line with your designs and instead try to place them in a diagonal from each other. Once this is done, select the layer of your colored square, press W on your keyboard to summon the auto select tool and select the white area outside of your canvas. Next up, simply select each of your character layers and press Ctrl X, Ctrl V on your keyboard what this will do is it will separate your layer in two parts. Go ahead and repeat this step for the two other characters too. Once you're done, take the new layer of your first character and if the character is at the top of your canvas, you will need to bring this part down all the way to the opposite side. Don't be afraid to zoom in a lot in order to leave no space between the edge of the square and the art, or it will show a seam once you repeat the pattern. You may also darken or saturate the color of the square to make this easier on yourself. And then you need to repeat the same step for the two other characters. But for the pink one, we have to bring our new layer to the right side instead. Let's do the same thing for our orange mushroom, but this time the cut part goes, of course, all the way up. Next, all we need to do is unhide the original layers and use them to fill the empty space inside our pattern. Make sure you leave more or less the same space between your designs, or it might break the repetition if you scale it down a lot. At this point, feel free to add tiny elements between your characters to make the pattern more interesting, if you want to. I personally went with adding simple leaves between the characters, nothing super fancy, but I think it adds a cute little touch to the final product, so I kept them. Once you're done with the placement of your designs, put all of your layers into one single folder. 
duplicate this folder and hide the original. After that, take the folder copy that you created and merge it into one single image. Go to Edit, change canvas size and decrease your canvas size to the original size of your pattern. And now all that's left to do is to take your art layer, click on this little arrow to open the material window. By the way, this is where you can find all the other patterns and resources that Clip Studio Paint offers by default. So next what we'll do is drag and drop our pattern layer inside the colored pattern library. Then we'll select our pattern, go to options and we will check the tiling box. Notice that you can also modify how you want your pattern to tile. If you only want it to tile vertically, horizontally, if you want it to flip on itself, you have multiple options that you can play with, so feel free to experiment with it. And then you'll press OK. Remember that you can always edit those preferences or create multiple instances of the same pattern if you wish. Finally, let's hide everything and simply drag and drop our pattern into the canvas. Normally, you should be able to scale it up and down at will. You can also rotate it to see how good the repetition looks. And if we're happy with the final result, then we're done. It's done, it's finished. Congratulations, you just created your first pattern. So let's move on to our second technique for creating patterns. The second method I use for creating patterns is a bit more advanced than the first technique, but it's also similar to it in several ways. So I will go through this tutorial a bit faster since it will be recycling some information from the first pattern technique. First, what you need to do is design a creature that will be repeated in your pattern. All right, now create multiple variations of the same creature, but try to make them different. Yet, try not to make them stand out too much from each other. Afterwards, simply center your creation in the canvas as much as possible and leave some empty space at the top and the bottom of your canvas. Once you're done, put all your layers into a single folder, duplicate it, hide the original and collapse the layers from the copy folder into one single image. Then go to the top menu, view, then click on grid and this will activate your grid. Go back to view, click this time on the grid and ruler settings and set the gap of the grid to half the size of your canvas, unless it goes over the maximum of 1000, in which case simply put 1000 and it will work anyway. Secondly, set the number of divisions to 1. Then press M on your keyboard to get the selection tool and make sure you've selected the rectangle shape. Next, simply select half of your canvas. You can start from any half you want, it doesn't really matter. And then you're gonna press Ctrl C, Ctrl V on your keyboard and it will split your image in half. What you must do next is to move both images to the opposite side they're facing by pressing K and then pressing Shift plus arrow. So the left side will go right and the right side will go left. Again, make sure no gaps sneak their way between the edge of the canvas and your art or it will create a seam in your pattern. Zoom in more if necessary because the move tool gets more precise as you increase your image size. Then all you gotta do is start filling the middle of your canvas with more creatures. Once you're done, move the art back into place and repeat the same steps, but this time select the top half of your piece, cut it and move both pieces up and down. Once more, draw a few more creatures to fill in the gap between the top and the bottom. All right, we're done. If you notice any more empty spaces, feel free to fill them. I did notice that a little gap was left on the left and right side of my canvas. So once I was done with everything, I went back again and made sure to fill in the empty space so there would be no empty spaces left awkwardly in the design. Finally, just drag and drop your image in the material library like we did for the first pattern. Go to the pattern settings, check the tiling box again and press OK. Good, now let's hide every layer and drag and drop our pattern right back into our canvas. 
let's scale it up and down and see how well it repeats and yeah it looks pretty great i'm really happy with it actually so this was pretty much my two techniques for how i create patterns the two techniques might be similar in some aspects, but they serve very different needs and purposes, and they wield very different results, as you can tell here. I really hope this tutorial was helpful to some of you. I know it might not be everybody's cup of tea, but patterns are just so fun to make, and I think everybody should try to make them at least once. I really want to make more of these tutorials if I can, and thank you so, so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Au revoir!